Well, let me put it out there. Uh, fluent speakers, some say we have 20. I have come up with six, six, six fluent Comanche speakers. Some people say, that's okay, we can rely on the Shoshone. I don't know, they uh, that one uh, really fast. You know, uh, we have a distinct language. We actually have different dialects of that language. We got Waipa Tequan, we got Tenapa Tequan, we got Noyoka Tequan, we got Penatokan Tequan, different ways to say our language. So, Mr. Guy, do you have a PowerPoint, sir? Okay, did you have it to them? There, are you guys geared up? You're on the air, sir. You're going to have to speak in the, you're going to actually speak in that. Turn it on. Is the video going to play? Okay. Who are we without our language? I feel like our language is in a dire place right now. We have an interest in it. We just don't have an interest in a lot of people to teach it. Is our language in trouble right now? Yes. Comanches don't want to speak their language. They get interested, they act interested, then they don't come. It's up to us to just keep on talking to people and telling them how important it is. Our language is the anchor to our culture and our identity. Without our language, we are just afloat. Hello, I'm coming to you today as a fellow member of the Comanche tribe. As you know, we as Comanche speak a very unique language. One that has developed over centuries, generations, and a long period of time. As of today, there are at least 10 fluent speakers. Of these 10 fluent speakers, around 6 make themselves available for lessons. Of all these fluent speakers, all are of 70 years or more. This would not be a problem if we had a solid curriculum by which to learn by. But we do not, and that is an issue because we will lose our chance to create a solid curriculum for the coming generations. As Comanches, we must ask ourselves, what do we value, and is our language one of those values? If it is one of our values, then let us make it a priority. If it is not one of our values, then let us act as so. Currently, there are personnel available who have expertise in linguistics, education, and media to create a curriculum of substance that will be long-lasting. All of this can be done in-house here at the complex with tribal members. This leaves the missing ingredient. You. You are a part of this too. This is your language. This is your history, your songs, your heart. All of this has to deal with you. If this is something you would like to see, then tell them and we will make it happen. Akitsina Ura. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, guys. Um, the, uh, what we're presenting is very clear. We're presenting a program about curriculum development for the Comanche language. Uh, we're lacking that right now. If you try to teach Comanche language, there's nothing to pull from. We have no materials, there's no videos, uh, there, there's nothing to really get into teaching students because there's no curriculum. Um, just right off the bat, does anyone have any questions about that video or anything you want to bring up? Uh, it'll take a little bit for me to think of that off the top of my head, but I'll get it right into the PowerPoint. Okay. Um, what I'm talking about today is the Comanche language curriculum development. Uh, it would have a few departments within it. Two people could handle all these situations going on, but you have research, development, applications, and distribution. Okay. Uh, and um, today I'm just going to tell you guys just the facts. I'm not really doing a, uh, a presentation or a persuasive speech here. I'm just telling you guys the facts and then let you guys decide on what you guys would like to do about it. Okay, uh, which button do I press? Okay. 
Okay. Uh, as it said in the video, there are about 10 fluent speakers. Uh, some are, most of them are 70 years and up. Our last Binaruka speaker, Geneva Navarro, I believe she's like 92 years old right now. Uh, of those 10 fluent speakers, about six make themselves available for lessons. That means they go out into the community and will actually talk with people and help teach classes. Uh, we have a fluent learner community. Those are people that are actually learning the Comanche language and actually getting pretty good, about, good at it. There's about five of them. And we have a fluent educator community, and that's only about three of us. Uh, that's myself, uh, Catherine P. Wienuffikit from Florida, and Dr. Todd McDaniels. Uh, those are the only fluent educator Comanches. Um, our situation is this. Um, the speakers are about to leave. Our last group of first language speakers, that's people who learned the language as a child, as a baby, and grow to, grew up knowing that as their first language. They're about to leave. The ones that are about to replace them are the people that learn Comanche language as a second language. So you lessen the quality of who's teaching you by not giving the first language speakers a chance to teach. Um, at the moment, we have no delivery system for the language. Uh, there's a few books out there, but there's not anything of quality. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to point out um, this first point right here. Dr. Todd McDaniels, um, he was from New York, and he came down here to study Comanche language and spent 10 years with Sandra Cardi. He learned the language, picked it up, and at, the, at one point he was the last, uh, he was the youngest fluent speaker male in the tribe, and he was a linguist. And that's just something to think about, that if someone else didn't pick it up, our last fluent speaker would have been Dr. Todd. Something to think about. Um, I'm going to skip through here because I know there's a lot of information. Everyone got to get going and everything. But uh, I'm going to get right to this point. But back, back when we were being... Um, Back when we were fighting the army and everything, this was exactly their plan to kind of assimilate us, to put us in boarding schools, and for us to lose our language. Um, Officer Richard Pratt, the, he established the government's take on Indian affairs, and it, it was to kill the Indian and save the man. Uh, General Sheridan uh, of Lawton, Oklahoma, General Sheridan said, the only good Indian is a dead Indian. So their intentions were perfectly clear about us, about where they wanted us to go and what they wanted us to do. Um, if we lose our language and we start to lose ties like that, uh, that will be total cultural defeat. Uh, we may have a standing government and we may have a standing tribe and we may have a standing um, casinos and business, but culturally we would have lost everything that makes us who we are. Um, uh, this little bottom slide right here, the WCD tribes, uh, Wichita's, Caddo's, and Delaware's. Um, the Wichita's last, lost their last fluent speaker back in August. And uh, now those three tribes have no more fluent speakers. Um, they contact us sometimes for about things that we're doing. But as far as they go right now, they're only learning off of audio and notes that people have taken. They've, they've lost it all already. The only ones that still have something left are, are the Comanches and the Kiowas. But the WCDs have no more speakers, and everything that they learn from is all audio. And that's kind of a scary reality because we're on the verge of that. We're on that tipping point where we could just become uh, speakers on audio tape. Um, uh, here's the deal about curriculum. Here's the deal about curriculum. Um, um, if you're gonna if you're gonna teach anything, if you're gonna teach anything, uh, whether you're teaching AA classes, whether you're teaching English, you're teaching math, you need a curriculum to teach from. Um, you need a standing uh, uh, starting point and a standing ending point and a standing um, after that, uh, a following period. Uh, but right now with the Comanche language, we have none of that. If you try to teach Comanche language, there's nothing to pull from. And I'm just going to read this little quote right here. Uh, there are no students without teachers. There are no teachers without materials. There are no materials without curriculum, and there is no curricula without developers. So uh, we're, not, we're not even at the starting point. We would have to have people developing the curriculum. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let me see. OK. Um, is there a way that I can zoom in on that?
Okay, the, yeah, right in the middle. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is a, a, a pyramid that shows how people learn. Um, the majority of how people learn is actual, by actual experience. You can't duplicate that. You have to actually try something to learn it. The next thing, the biggest bracket after that is 50% of how people learn, and that's an actual demonstration. People had to see that done. At the very top is what you read. And most of our curriculum right now with Comanche language is all written material. There's nothing demonstrating the Comanche language in action, and there's nothing showing you how to teach it. So we're still at the very top. We haven't even touched this part down here, and that's the majority of how people learn. Okay, so what I'm, um, like I said, I'm not really proposing anything. I just wanted to bring this to the discussion table. Um, if you guys were gonna go a route to, to actually save the language, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, many tribes right now are just going to media. Uh, many tribes have hired companies out in California called Thornton Media, and they come here and they create phone applications, and you can pull up anything you want on your phone and have access to language that way, digitally, audibly, audibly, and visually. Um, and, or we could do something in-house where we create our own videos, our own audio, and our own curriculum. But in order to do that, up here at this blue one, you would need analysts. Those are your developers. So they take from the source, which is the speakers, they, they, take, a, uh, they take information they design that information. Once they go into the designing period, they go into the developing period, and that's when media and different people become involved and different teachers and give their input. So they go to the development. After that, they go into the implementation of that. They actually try that out in classrooms, see how things work, and then they evaluate it. Did it work? What did we get right? What did we get wrong? And they'll try again. And so this is where we need to be at if we're going to actually create a good curriculum. And that's, that's standard operating procedure for creating curriculum for mathematics or English or wherever. I mean, that's the model that any school would follow, be it Elgin or Oklahoma City. So if, if you wanted to create something that's, that's legitimate. Um, some of the things that we could create are instru instructional videos from TP making, bow bow making, fire making, skinning, um, healthy lifestyle habits, cooking, cleaning, preparing your clothes. Um, it doesn't really have to stop there. Uh, there's enrichment videos. We could do storytelling, still pictures with narratives. Uh, we could teach ethics, morals. Uh, we could even have our own documentary series if you wanted to do that. And we could actually have tutorials, and those are actually like classroom sessions that actually teach the language. Um, let's see what else. And one thing that I would like to see videos kind of touch on was something that uh, Jamie Bigbo hit on with the, um, with the I Am Indian program, is that a lot of things can be addressed through media, through digital, uh, through, through, uh, digital communications. And one thing that our tribe is missing is uh, establishing healthy habits. Um, if we took care of ourselves, we took care of our spirituality, and we took care of our mind and our spirit, that would take care of a lot of the things that LR tribes at this moment. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that at one period, we were at war. After war, we went to boarding schools. After boarding schools, we were released into, into the public schools. And a lot of people don't realize that as a group, we're still kind of suffering a sort of PTSD from that whole experience if we've never actually taken the time to recover from that. So, and I, I believe that's why we see a lot of the things we see uh, nowadays with the drug and alcohol abuse. Um, so, we can create videos that explain the language around the house, uh, explain the language at work, uh, explain the language in a bunch of different ways, but the overall goal, the overall goal of what we would be trying to create is creating a healthier tribe mentally, physically, emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, culturally, linguistically, and socially. Um, 
but it, it starts with culture and getting back to who we are at our core and finding our identity once again after all these uh, events have happened to us. Um, and that is the conclusion of my presentation. Guy and I, we sat here, I was drinking coffee, and he showed me on a dry erase, uh, eight and a half by 11, a little process, and I was like, that'll work. That'll really work. Johnny, I know you wanted to share something to this. Could you please come forward? Uh, we talked about budgetary needs, and he said, what about a million to save our language? I said, why not? Um, where do I start? The first thing I would like to say is our language, it has a really strong spirit. It really, truly does. It ties us back to our culture, our ancestors. Um, I still believe and I know many of y'all here do, that our elders, the ones that have gone on generations back are still here. And um, they, they really want to guide our tribe and our nation into getting to be more spiritual and more culturally defined as Comanche. We, we've gotten away from that. And I've noticed firsthand, you know, teaching in the schools that the students, when they start learning the language, it just transforms their heart and their mind and, and they begin to to realize that they they come from somebody. They come from their before that they had no identity. You know, they, they didn't know if they were supposed to be U Thaiwa or Thu Thaiwa or Thaiwa. You know, they try to act like each one. They didn't know how to act Comanche and act how how we grew up, you know, we were taught respect, respect your elders, do everything to help your elders, um, don't complain about it. And through teaching language at school, I've had teachers, uh, stu students and, or their parents call me and say, I just wanna to talk to you about my son or daughter I don't know what you're doing to them in school. And I, I was like, oh no, what's, so I'm about to get an earful. And so they said, he's really helpful around the house. He's real polite now. If I tell him to go take out the trash, he'll go do it right away. Um, and I attribute this in a great part to the language. I really, really, truly do. And it, and it shows in the research of tribes that have immersion schools, that their kids are more respectful, more cooperative. They, uh, they even do better once they get out of the immersion schools and go to public schools. They score higher than the kids that didn't go to immersion schools. And a lot of that is just the respect that our language, the spirit of our language teaches them. Um, I didn't bring a presentation, but I, I wanted to talk about perhaps getting a budget together to present for an immersion house or an immersion room, classroom that would last three months to six months. Like Guy said, we, we need some young, fluent speakers. We don't have any 
young fluent speakers. We need some, you know, it really touched my heart one time. I was telling the chairman I was at a powwow um, after at the Potawatomi powwow. There's all these little kids running around and they were speaking their language. And I was just like, wow, that is just, just too cool. Why can't why can't our people do that? Why, why is our language going to die? And like Guy said, is that, is that what we want? Do we want to focus on our language more? Because it, it really does tie our children back to our culture. And our culture was, if we lose that, we lose our ident identity, and we'll be like the kids were before before they started learning language. You don't know who you are. You don't know how to act. You don't know, uh, you don't know respect. Respect for your culture, respect for your, the earth, respect for water, respect for anything. Um, I'm just, We're at a uh, state of emergency with our language. We, our fluent speakers are leaving, and but we have that opportunity right now, today. We do, we truly do. Do we wanna act on that? I would love to. I would love for us to do that. I would love for our language to, to come back strongly. I know my Comanche 2 students, they're, they're just like little birds, just feed me, feed me. What, what more can we do? I'm teaching them simple sentences and they want to learn paragraphs and, and where they can speak to each other in the public. And uh, I said, well, maybe one day I'll have a Comanche 3 class where we can do all that. But in in Comanche 1, I just teach them about, uh, they're taught just mainly vocabulary. And a lot of different families know different, different things like animals or, or uh, relatives, or simple words. But I want them all to learn all of them. And then in Comanche 2, they learn nouns then verbs, and then parts of speech, and then to do simple sentences and response, response to questions. So I would really like to be, to work on that, to work on getting the budget together for all the elders that we'll need to get to accomplish getting some fluent speakers. If we can get five fluent speakers in the next year or two years, then they can, or maybe more than that, I think. I think we could get maybe 20, 20 young speakers. And, uh, and then it, it'll just blossom from there, I believe. Because I think our language in our youth today is is kind of spreading like a wildfire. I, I had students that that took my class that they went with I am Indian and some of the other students were speaking Comanche to each other and pointing at different things and, and naming them off in Comanche and, and they they wanted to know what, what they were saying. So it's there, the product is there, the people, the, the youth, the, the children. We just need to organize, get an organization going to, to improve the curriculum and uh, get some fluent speakers. Uh, that's, that's uh, I, I really hate for our language to die. I really, really do not want our language to die. 
but. Johnny, this is our business committee member, Johnny Poe. He does teach at Elgin and he does teach at Cash. The thing is, we have wore out every angle of to do this, but I'm going to tell you, when someone said $1 million, I'm sitting there going, why not? We are at DEFCON 5 on this. You know, are we to just let our language go? Nakaku would take me to that fruit, say, ah, ka. She'd come over here, pana, say, ya. You know, I couldn't eat unless I said what that fruit was, you know. It's that that teaches. And it starts with their babies. And I'm like Kim, when you see all these uh, Atavits, their children running around speaking their language. And even their teenagers throwing their app out and talking their language to each other, which young guys talking about. I think we got to do it by all means possible. All means possible. Johnny, I appreciate you. Guy, wonderful. Uh, we're going to put this on the agenda. Hello, hello.